Today we are talking about the top five things that I hate about model railroading. Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm back for another unusual rail rambling. Uh, I am uh, driving, obviously. I I had lent my camera stand and um, and uh, mount and microphone to my boss so he could uh, use it in a wedding. And then I thought, like, oh shoot, like I'm not gonna be able to record any videos for you guys. Um, and it's been a little while since I recorded a video, so I wanted to. I want, so then I and then I was watching somebody's vlog and they're driving in the car and looking incredibly unsafe as they're doing it. I'm like, oh wait, I could do that too. So here we are. <laughs> uh, I um, I wanted to talk today. Well, so first of all, like I haven't done um, live streams for a little for a few weeks, and I think what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to get out one video a week either a live stream or like a rail rambling or like a how-to video or a layout update video um, because uh, it just, it's summertime, I'm, my, my time is filled up. Um, like, a, you know, I'm on baby duty quite a bit these days and it's hard for me to get like a lot of progress done in the summer anyway. Um, maybe, uh, you know, a lot of my time is spent outside just trying to maintain my yard. You know how it goes. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is just one video a week. And this week is going to be rail rambling, top five things that I hate about model railroading. I actually saw um, another YouTuber, I think his name is DIY and Digital Railroad, had done a top five things I hate video. I thought it was kind of fun. Um, and so I thought I would do one as well. So I'm going to link to his video below. Um, so you can check his video out and I thought I would do my own kind of uh, not response video but uh, version of what he did because you know I, I, I try to be positive about modern railroading it's a fun hobby it's my favorite hobby um, but there are things that I hate about it so I wanted to share those things with you and I left the notes for those things uh, sitting on my phone which I'm using to record right now so I don't exactly remember what I wrote down for my top fives but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna wing it I'm sure I can come up with top with, with, with my top five list off the top of my head. The, the first thing that I hate about mono railroading, um, and these aren't really in order necessarily, um, but the first thing I hate is I hate that it is hard to get into. There's a big kind of learning curve to mono railroading. And what I mean by that is this. This could probably be its own real rambling video altogether. But if you compare, this is gonna be a long rail rambling today, I can already tell. <laughs> if you compare um, your options for getting into this hobby versus different hobbies. So let's say, um, let's say, uh, let's compare it with uh, RC cars. So like you can buy a cheap RC car, right? You can go to Walmart and get a cheap RC car. That's not really the RC car hobby, is it though? No. Um, if you've been in a hobby shop, you've seen RC cars for, you know, 500, 800, and up, right? And, and cheaper, for sure. Um, those, are the, those are the hobbyists. Well, our, the RC car community, if you are just getting into RC cars and you know you don't want that Walmart car, you want that nice hobby car, you have options. You have different price points, for sure. But, like, you can, you can go out and you can buy a kit which contains the car, uh, the controller, you know, the, the transmitter, um, all the components that you might need, your motor, your servos, your batteries, for, let's say, $300, you can get a good one. Probably $400 is probably closer to the actual price. And 400 bucks is a lot, but you know that like you want to get into the hobby, you want to spend, you, you want to, you know you need to spend some money to do it right. Uh, and you know that $100 isn't going to be enough, right? And you can get everything you need. And that's a great start in the hobby. And if you're an advanced hobbyist, right, they, these cars come in kits where you get the car, but you don't get the motor or you don't get the servos, or you don't get the transmitter, because you're gonna supply all those yourself. You know what you want, 
you know your preferences, you're gonna bring all that to the table anyway. The way the model railroad hobby stands right now is you either have like your Bachman train set, right? The little HL scale train set that you would buy for a kid for Christmas or something you'd put underneath the Christmas tree maybe. And it comes with like a circle of flex track and uh, a kind of terrible locomotive and some cheap cars and like that little brown, you know, uh, DC uh, throttle that's like, you, you know, you spin the little thing in a circle. And that is um, not a great way to get in the hobby, right? If you're if you're kind of interested in trains, you're like, I don't know if I'm gonna like trains. Maybe get that and say like, oh, yeah, I actually kind of do like trains. Let me upgrade from here, and then from there, it's like, well, what kind of DCC system do you want? What kind of locomotive? Like that locomotive's not gonna work great. You can't DCC that locomotive. So what else do you want? Not necessarily you have to get into DCC right away, but uh, you kind of you want to because you want the sound, you want all that stuff, you want nice looking cars. You want good looking track, like you, you're gonna nail this track down. So, you know, the sectional track is like, it's not, you know, it's not gonna give you the shape that you want for your layout. You're not gonna you're have to buy some turnouts. Like there's a lot of, like eventually, really quickly, you get into like, oh my gosh, like I'm kind of over my head. And I, there's no way to spend like a good amount of money and kind of get everything all at once. So what I would like to see what I, my, my ideal way of like seeing this hobby go would be like the Mono Railroad Beginner's Kit. And this is what it would be. It would be a decent Atherin ready to roll, like, like was this, I can't remember, their cheaper line, the Atherin cheaper line of locomotives. So you get good tooling, you get a good looking locomotive that runs very well. It comes with DCC, you get like an Economy DCC decoder. Uh, those have the sound, I believe, right? So a little bit of sound in those. A cheap, like, and then Atherin partners with like NCE, so the power cab system gets bundled into that as well, right? And, uh, you know, Atherin, some of the Atherin's ready to roll cars. Like maybe you would have like a Union Pacific mixed freight package that has a nice UP, um, you know, GP35 or something. Uh, mixed with some like nice modern cars. Maybe you have one that's like a uh, like a Norfolk and Southern coal train package, um, and then flex track. So you would par partner with Walthers at that point, right? So you get some Walthers flex track in their turnouts. Maybe you get like three turnouts or four turnouts, two of each. To left hand to right hand and, and uh, enough flex track to like lay out a four by eight foot layout and am i missing anything cork midwest cork uh you pack, uh, partners with them as well so you get uh, a, a good you know appropriate amount of cork to go along with your track work and you have everything you need to start a mono railroad and yeah you got to put it together yourself and you got to kind of learn dcc a little bit and you gotta figure out how to lay flex track. But if you are like, I wanna get in the hobby and I don't wanna mess with, you know, the the Bachman train set, how, like what's my next best step? Right now your next best step is to just research forever and then buy a bunch of stuff that may or may not work appropriately for you uh, and make mistakes. And I kinda would want to see like the industry get together and make um, an all-in-one solution. Yes, it's expensive, but I think if you're getting into mono railroading, you know enough to know that like you're gonna have to spend some money. And and you have to do it in any other hobby. If you wanna get into RC airplanes, you know you're gonna be spending several hundred dollars just to get in. RC cars, the same thing. You're spending several hundred dollars just to get in. Like any of these sort of like crazy niche hobbies. Mountain biking, you're spending you know, five, six hundred dollars just to get in, and honestly, closer to a thousand dollars to do it right. So, getting started in the hobby, number five, five thing I hate about the hobby. I told you this is gonna be a long video. Uh, I'll go faster. Number four thing that I hate is just the amount of space that it takes up, and there's nothing to really be done about it. 
But like, if you want an HO scale layout, you're going to be spending, you're going to be, uh, uh, you know, you're going to be taking up some space, especially if you want to be able to do a continuous running layout. I think the smallest continuous running HO scale layout that you can really honestly get away with is probably like a four by six or a three and a half by six or something like that. You know, tabletop layout. And that means you're going to have to put it in a room that you can dedicate a good amount of space for this layout, right? This is like larger than a kitchen table size layout here at this point we're talking, right? Um, and that's difficult for a lot of people to do, especially if you have a, uh, an apartment. You can do a shelf layout, which is my, what my previous layout was. But if you're just getting into the hobby, like maybe you don't want just a shelf layout. And even if you've been in the hobby for a while, you know that like shelf layouts are a little bit like these small shelf layouts are, you know, they're nice. They're a great way to do it. I did it for a number of years, but it could get a little boring. You want to see trains run maybe, right? It just may not be right for you. So like, then you have to go down to like end scale and end scale, you can do a nice, decent layout in end scale at a smaller size. Um, but maybe end scale is not for you. It's just, there's always this like trade off of like what I really want and but how much space I have available to me. And that's not something that's necessarily true about um, any other hobby. You know, this idea of like um, being limited, not by money, not by, you know, money's not the limiting factor here. Um, time isn't necessarily a limiting factor here. It's space and that stinks that that's that way. Uh, speaking of money, another thing that I don't like about modern railroading is just how much it costs. And I've mentioned it before, but um, price on some things in modern railroading is very high. Um, and I think if you keep your, your layout small enough or keep your scope kind of small enough, you can mitigate that a little bit. I mean, obviously modern railroading is something that you do over many, many years, so you're not buying everything all at once. But DC systems, DCC systems are expensive. Locomotives are expensive. Like nice cars are expensive. And there's ways around all of that, but they're tricky. Um, you know, you're making compromises for price, which is something you do every, everywhere, I guess. But it's hard. It's, it, it, it's difficult. Like I, I see a lot of guys with like, you know, they have like 30 locomotives on their layout, <laughs> all with DCC. Um, you know, scale trains and Atherin Genesis, and you're like, I don't know how you uh, were able to send your kids to college. So what I'm trying to do with my channel is like, kind of like show you nice stuff, but like also like be reasonable about it, because because um, I don't have I don't have all the money in the world, and uh, I, it, it's one of those things where like back in the day you could buy like a five dollar Atherin blue box. And everyone else had the same $5 blue box. So like you felt like you were part of the crowd, right? Because everyone was running $5 equipment back in the day. And now um, equipment's like $50 and even more expensive depending. And so if you want to feel like you're part of the crowd, you want to run that $50 equipment. That's a, that's a lot of money. You know what I mean? Like I, I compare it to video games because I do a lot of video gaming. It's like one video game. Like each car is like a video game. <laughs> that's a lot of, and it's, you know, and then, you, but you build it up over the years, right? So you build your, your fleet over the years, but if you're just getting started, uh, you know, and you want like f five cars, you know, you don't want to spend 250 bucks on cars. Now, granted, you know, you wouldn't necessarily spend that much, but you can find cheaper ways of doing it for sure. But like cost is certainly a factor. So space cost, uh, time. Time is another factor uh, that I hate about mono railroading, and I think it's I think it's just it's not that it takes a long time to build a mono railroad, but I think the time invested versus the um, versus the gains accomplished. So it's hard to explain. So I've been working on my track work for a while now on my mono railroad. <laughs> About a, about a year, about a year. I've been working on track for the on the track work for my world. And granted, I haven't been doing it every weekend. Um, 
or every evening or whatever. I've been kind of taking my time and going slow, but I, I'm, I'm like halfway through. <laughs> I'm more than halfway through. I'm three quarters of the way through, but that, it feels like it's just taking forever. It's just taking forever. And building like layout construction, like building the benchwork takes forever. And then painting the backdrop, it takes forever. And then ballasting the track takes forever. And it's a it's a good thing because like it's a hobby that lasts you for years, right? If you build an RC car from the ground up, you can do it in like a month. You know, all you're really doing is waiting on your your shipment to get to you from you know from eBay. Um, you know, all your parts. You know, when you get parts, you put them on, wait for your next parts to come, put them on. Uh, and I think that leads to like. Um, either people like falling out of the hop, out of interest with the hobby, or like just going and going and going and buying more and more of the same, you know, slightly different versions of the same thing, just because like they're bored, they want more, they want more, they want more. Um, and you don't necessarily get that with mono railroading, but like it, it lasts for much, much longer. Like Jack Burgess is one of the greatest mono railroaders. There's that YouTube series um, by. Um, Oh, what's their names? MG, MSG, MG, whatever. Just look for Jack Burgess uh, Model Railroad on YouTube and you'll find a whole series with his videos. Like, this is a lifelong project for him. He spent, I don't know, was it 40 years? I feel like it was 40 years, 30 years, something like that, building this Model Railroad. And he built everything. That's awesome. Like, that's the way it should, should be for everyone. Like, spend your, spend your life building your Model Railroad. Um, but what's frustrating is like a lot of like along the way, like at the end of the day, you look at it and you're like, wow, like I built something amazing. But along the way, you're like, this is taking too long. Does that make sense? Like my laying my track work is just taking too long. And a lot of it's just because I'm not working, um, quickly on it. But a lot of it is just like to do it right. You got to take your time and you know, you may work for two, three hours on something and you've laid like six feet of track <laughs> in a couple of turnouts. You know what I mean? Uh, and, um, you know, when you got a, a, a decent sized layout, that can be a little frustrating. Like my staging yard took, took me way too long to get that staging yard, yard done. And I'm still not done. I've still got to run feeder wires to like half of it. And then I've got to like wire up the, uh, turnouts, and, uh, Throw switch, turn out, uh, throw a tortoise switch machine motors on there, and then figure out how to wire all those together so I can run them by ADCC. And I know that's like dozens of hours of work in there, and it, it's a little off putting. It's one of the things I hate about mono railroading. The final thing that I hate about mono railroading is DCC. I dislike DCC with a passion. Um, and so here's the thing, like DCC is great. It's a great idea. It was great when it came out. Like you can suddenly run multiple locomotives together without having to worry about power districts. Um, you, you sound, adding sound to locomotives, being able to like, you know, blow a horn, ring your bell. Uh, you know, the coupling, uncoupling sounds, the sound of the locomotive, you know, spinning up and, and, uh, notching, notching up and, you know, awesome. Like what DCC does. And then like to be able to run accessories through DCC, all through your controller. Awesome. But why has the interface never changed since it was first brought around? Why are you hitting, why are you hitting F5? Why is F5 a thing? What is F5 and why do you have to hit it? How does that translate to a good user experience? And I'm a UI UX designer in real life. So like user experience is something that like, user interfaces and experiences are something that I think about for my job. But uh, it it's, it's so overly complex to like figure out CVs and you know, what you're supposed to 
hit and like setting up a locomotive. I have an ESU, um, ESU uh, 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 a cab control system, and I'm using like locomotives with ESU look sound on them, and that's like super simple to set up, and the interface is really nice. But behind it all is still the DCC system where like if I want to change anything, I got to go in there and start messing around with CVs. And I got to like look up on a chart what a CV is. And it's just, it's annoying. I know there's like Railcom, I think is what it's called, or Rail Pro, I think it's called Railcom. That's like slightly different than DCC, but it's pretty close. Um, I, you know, come up with a better interface, guys. It's been how many years? Like. I feel like DCC, like they, 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 they put out the first systems with like the interface that it had because that's what sort of, because it was made by engineers, right? And then like everyone was like, okay, this is it. Like we're used to this, like don't ever change this. And they're like, okay, we never will. And they never have. Uh, and so, and so now we're stuck, we're stuck with DCC um, being the way it is. And I think DCC is great for what it does to the hobby, but like come up with a better interface. Like if I want to adjust, um, you know, if I want to adjust, if I want to adjust my speeds, there's gotta be a better way to do that. Let me hit a button that says like, um, you know, speed control. And then I, I, I just top in 100, bottom in zero. I don't know. I, I don't know what it is. Um, you know, uh, I'm rambling. I am rambling now and I'm in my garage, so I'm home. So anyways, that this has been a longer rail rambling today. Top five things I hate about modern railroading. Let's, let, let's review quickly. Here we go. Hard to get in to the hobby. Let's all the companies come together and come up with like some sort of like starter pack. Uh, I think it'd be great for the hobby. I think get more people in earlier. I think they'll become less frustrated. I think they'll have a lot of fun. Space, it's, uh, it, it takes up space. Not a lot to do about that. You know, thank God for end scale. <laughs> uh, money, does it need to be this expensive? Does it really need to be this expensive? Like, do we need to spend this much money? <sighs> Maybe, I don't know. Uh, 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 time investment. Hey, this is a lifelong hobby. Part of the great things about this hobby is it takes time. It takes up your time. It fills your hobby time with awesome things to do. Um, but man, like I, I, I wish some things were faster to get done. I wish track work was faster to get done. I wish bench work was faster to get done. I wish scenery was a little faster to get done. We all want to get to the end product, you know, as soon as possible. And it takes years to do that if you're doing it right. And that's frustrating. And the number one thing is DCC. DCC, I hate you. I hate you, DCC. I've been putting off learning how to use it properly. I'm gonna have to figure it out one day. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to figure out what a CV is one, one of these days. <laughs> uh, it's it's it, DCC goes back to like the, the, the very beginning. It's hard to get into the hobby. Like it's complex. The whole DCC this thing is, it's, it's hard to figure out what the heck that means when you're first starting out. You gotta do a lot of reading and a lot of asking people. Hopefully you know somebody that, that, that has a DCC system that can walk you through it. I, I don't really have that. I, I'm sort of trying to figure it out on my own. I'm doing a bad job. Anyway, this, uh, this is it. Thanks for uh, putting up with me as I, uh, as, I, um, as I do this. Now I know how long of a trip it is between my parents' house and mine. It's about, it's about 25 minutes. Uh, so that, that's good to know. Anyways, totally rambling now. Follow me on Instagram when I'm uh, updating my layout. It'll be there. Um, check out my blog. I need to get back to blogging more. I, that, ever since I started this YouTube channel, I've, uh, I've stopped blogging so much. I need to do it more. I'm gonna do it more. Alrighty, thanks a lot, everyone. I'll see you on the next Real Rambler.